amount of time to properly gel with this guitar. When I say unbelievably, let's turn it off. Hold on. So for those of you who've been around for a little while, you'll know that my wife, Sarah Jane, my then girlfriend, bought this for me when we've been together for six months. Just surprised, it just turned up from Toman, which is just, still blows my mind today that she did such a thing. It's dusty, it's a thing with black. It's a Harley Benton SC. DLX, well, stands for Deluxe, Goto. So it's got Goto gold tuners on it. It's got a Goto bridge. And it's got a Tusk nut, stainless steel frets, an ebony fretboard. It's not your darkest ebony, it's somewhere sort of between, it looks like a very dark rosewood, I suppose. Uh, Tesla pickups, push pull, chambered body, super light. It's got a nice neck on this, Graham Tinkler, if you're watching. <laughs> It's like a, it's a slim D, really. And yeah, so now single cut guitars aren't my favorite type of guitar. I've, I've always, what kind of I suppose I've sort of like tellies and strats more, uh, latterly more, more, um, more tellies. I've forgotten actually, recessed cavity pockets is nice as well. Um, anyway, my, uh, my guitar friend Tom, I sent it off to him, I took it to him to give it a bit of love. I've always thought this neck pickup sounded a bit muddy. And yeah, it needed a good setup. He did some jiggery pokery with the wiring. I forget exactly what he's done, but basically there's just no real volume drop when you go on to single coil mode. And he's just kind of got the best performance out of it all around the sound of it. But because I've never really been a, a Les Paul kind of a guy, I've loved it because of what it is and who bought it for me. And I've played it uh, a fair bit, but I've always tended to you know go to something else a little bit. But over the last few months in particular, I've really finally 
bonded with this a lot. And I think because I've had so many guitars over the last few months to compare it to. Now this net pickup, it's a bit dark. I'm gonna take I'm gonna stop calling it muddy, that's not that's not fair. It's dark, but it sounds so super, super mellow when you've um because when you've got it on a sort of a medium volume or you've got or, or you've got a fair bit of gain on, as you just heard. But the sweet spot for me on the tone on this, it's taken me ages to get to here. I've got the push pull out, I've got it on the middle position. Anyone who's stuck around for a while, no, I like middle position. I've got the neck pickup volume on sort of six, seven, and I've got the bridge on 10. And what that seems to be doing for me is taking away some of the darkness of the neck pickup, but not so much, you know, it's still there, and adding the brightness of the bridge and giving me a really lovely tone, whether it's clean or overdriven, that you just heard that with two Joyo pedals on the, the Tai Chi and the Vintage Overdrive, which is in front of it. The Vintage Overdrive's got the gain quite low, really, on a clock face. It's at about 10 o'clock, so you know, it could go all the way around. And on the Tai Chi, it's the opposite, it's a bit higher. So one's high volume, higher volume and lower gain and one's the other way around and one's got they're both fairly dark in terms of the bass and treble and um yeah it just sounds it just sounds lovely i keep picking it up yeah more more and more and more having had all these other guitars and thinking actually this guitar and these pickups sound good I and mean, when i was talking the other day about maybe getting some emgs in that uh Jackson, which I might well do, and as I've talked about changing, oh, this is so dirty, it's naughty of me. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't need some new strings. These are the same strings that Tom put on for me 18 months ago now, <laughs> when he had it and did his stuff with it. Um, but yeah, so gosh, if ever there was a, it's it takes time and appreciation, it's been this guitar. I mean, look at the neck carb as well here look so you can get up to the higher frets easy, pretty easily um you know it's a kind of cross between an lp and an eclipse isn't it the way it's set up these aren't the original knobs i'll put these off to prefer them well uh, hiya buddy if you're watching i mean he's often said this, this sounds better than savannah did my beloved prs sc245 not too sure if that's the case or not but yeah this is such a good guitar and i'm delighted that i've got it i'm super grateful to sarah jane for buying it for me and you know, when I look at over the specs and what it is, I mean, I don't even, I don't really like jumbo, jumbo stainless steel frets. These aren't as chunky as they were on my Chapman that I just sold. They were really big. These are, they are, they are jumbo-y, but they're a bit closer to medium, I suppose. Um, yeah, wonderful. So, I think they still sell these on Toman, but mate, not this colour. About two hundred and forty pounds, two hundred and eighty pounds, something like that. Even just stock, great guitar. I mean, Tom said to me when he had it, because I talked to him about, then about changing the pickups. He was like, don't do that. <laughs> to, for, for the style of guitar it is, you don't need to do that. And, you know, we got one of his expensive you know, guitars out. Uh, his name's Gibson, ages ago now. And you're like, yeah, okay, fair enough. So what's the moral of this story? Stick with it. Um, when you compare it to other things, you realize it's something you've got is already brilliant and yeah, Mina, the mighty Mina.